Joining me now is Gulale Ismail, and she's the chairperson of Aware Girls, and she comes from Pakistan. Thanks so much for being with us today. Thank you me. know, I was really inspired by what you talked about this morning in the, the plenary session. I, and I'd like for you to, to speak to us about the work that you do with, with young girls, especially in a place like Pakistan, which is so rife with the violence. How do you help them? Um, so I come from the northwest of Pakistan, which is one of the most difficult parts of the world for women and young girls. And um, for, uh, for initial years of my life, I was told by my cousins and my family that I was very privileged because I had a father which was ensuring that we were going to really good schools. As a kid, I didn't realize that I was privileged because in my mind and with all the teachings that my parents were giving me, I thought that it is the basic right of every young girl to go to school. But it was then when one of my own cousin was taken out of school at, the, at a very young age of 15, who had the dream of becoming a pilot to be married off to a man who was 10 years older than her. Seeing her dream shattered, she always wanted to become a pilot, but seeing her dream shattered was very devastating for me and I couldn't save her. And that was the moment when I realized that education is actually not a priority, not a, not a basic right for, uh, for every girl. It's if you are born in a family which support girls' education, girls' empowerment, then your life will be good. But if you are born in a family which is traditional, then most probably you will end up getting married before the age of 16. And this is actually true for more than 60% of the girls. And for Pakistan, more than 60% of the girls are getting married before the age of 18 or 16 and only 18% of the girls actually are able to complete more than 12 years of schooling. Mm -hmm. So that's a shame. How old were you when this happened with this girl who was taken out of school and, and married off? I was around 14 years 14 old. Years 14 years old. 14, 15 years so old. So that, that was a catalyst for you to begin helping other girls so that they wouldn't have to go through this experience? This was one of my, uh, one of the experiences where I realized that I have to do something to change it. I was aware that I come, I live in a society which is very discriminatory toward girls because uh, because I had always seen, my mother was, a, was someone who used to do embroidery on clothes. So mm. women from all, from our village will come to meet my mother and uh, ask my mother to make flowers on their mm -hmm. clothes. So, but I grew up listening to their stories and from their stories I knew from, as a very young girl, I knew what it meant to be a girl or to be a woman in our community. So I knew that the culture is against women. They see them lesser human beings, that boys are more cherished than girls. Girls were supposed to become obedient wives rather than, um, rather than having careers or rather than having dreams for their mm -hmm. communities or for their own selves. Like the way society act, it was to make to mold girls into obedient wives and to fit in the family roles rather than seeing them as an individuals who can have their own dreams, their own passions, or, or, or even they can have dreams for their community. So I was aware of that and I was not happy with it. But when this incident happened with my very close cousin, it was a moment I knew I have to do something that I can change the fate of girls uh, in my community and it was then my me and my sister we started discussing this idea with girls we started just listening to them about their issues what is bothering them in their life mm -hmm. what change they would like to see in their uh, lives and uh, and then we together we started discussing ideas on how we can make change and we named this campaign aware girls mm -hmm. a campaign which will enable girls to speak up for their rights tell me about the male domination in your society is it possible to change it it's it seems so entrenched you, you still have honor killings in Pakistan you, I mean girls are are not thought of as, as as human beings almost they're like property how, how do you change the male mentality the basic problem is patriarchy we live in a culture which is uh, uh, fundamentally which is um, a feudalistic and tribal culture Pet and patriarchy is the main norm, which means that men are considered as the head of the families and being head of the families, they are the one who control resources, they are the one who make decisions and everyone else, be it chil if they are children or women, they are supposed to, um, uh, they, they are supposed to fulfill their duties in that system of patriarchy and without challenging patriarchy, without changing patriarchy, it is 
difficult to empower women because the whole patriarchy is based on male dominance. The whole culture is based on dominance. Like we, we, we come from a culture where men control most of the resources and even legally women will like inheritance rights of women are lesser than men. For example, if my father has a has a plot of um, has a plot of land my brother legally will get more he will get more and i will get half of what he's getting mm -hmm. so even like today uh, even at legal terms like yes cultural is against women the um, discriminations against women are rooted in the culture women are more considered property of men rather than being seen as independent human beings they are seen as wives mothers daughters like we don't hear stories about women as being individuals, mostly their role are connected to their gender roles or to their family roles. How do you change that? How do you change the, the male mentality? How do you change the patriarchal society? How do you, because obviously the, the men want to keep it the way that it is. Okay, so I want to say it's not about men wanting to see it. It's not like a competition between men and women. Patriarchy is not just about men and men having more power. I, it's a norm where everyone has accepted that system and norm and both men and women are part of it. Men amplify the system, women amplify it as mm -hmm. well. So it's both about men and women. It's about changing the mindset of both men and women. It's not just about changing the mindset of men. When I started working with girls, we realized that a very before even starting uh, giving the name of aware girls giving uh, we, before we gave this name what we realized was that many girls had internalized the ideas of patriarchy and they thought that this is, this is the best system because they, they thought they are privileged if they are not allowed to work and if men have to earn and they just sit back at home they thought it's a privilege so when we started realizing that girls have internalized the system we realized that if we want to change the system then we have to work with girls we have to change the mindset of girls first they have to accept that yes I'm an equal human being and be and because I'm an equal human being I have equal rights and one and once girls and women once they understand it and once they start speaking up then we can challenge patriarchy and we can change the whole mindset but I think it should start with girls okay not with men. it starts with girls but then there's the threat and you spoke about this with the Taliban and and the violence that can occur uh, and you've got people who, who don't want this to change. So you, you start with the girls, but you've got to get the men to change as well. We, and how do you do that? We engage communities holistically. We engage families in dialogues, we engage communities in dialogues, and we, we engage them in dialogue so that they can see the importance of what wonders can happen to uh, happen to a community when both men and women are equally contributing to their community when they are equally seen as human beings when we started working on the political empowerment of women because we think that one of the important means of changing the system of patriarchy is to have more women in the decision making tables to have more women in the policy making structures if we will have more women more women voices in the policy making mm -hmm. structures then we can mold the systems in benefit of everyone have you been so, threatened? Uh, so I would first like to tell that when we started, so our way of working was to work with the communities. We were working in one of the rural parts of Pakistan, Mardan, in the very rural parts, where women had never, where women had never run for elections, had never gone for voting. So we started working both with men and women over there, and we started talking to them about how important it is for women to take part in politics. And in that village, men became the leaders of women rights they become the champions of women rights and they started convincing other people in their community that why it is important and when election came men were supporting and standing with women who decided that they will run for elections so with the support of women now there are counselors from that mm -hmm. village as well women counselors so it's the power of like everyone in the community and work towards this dream and, um, and is society getting stronger as a result of this kind of change where women are becoming more uh, part of the power structure? It's a, tricky, um, it's a tricky question. Yes, the society is getting stronger. Yes, we, are now have, we have more women in the decision-making tables. In the last 10 years, we have, we, we have seen, we have witnessed that now because we have more women in the policy-making tables, more laws have been developed 
in favor of women which protect rights of women such as laws against sexual harassment at workplaces, laws against early and child marriages, laws against forced marriages and other custom, customary practices such as honor killing which are against women. So we have seen that because we have more women at the policy and decision making table, now laws are, there are laws and systems to protect women. The Spirit of Humanity Forum, when you come and, and you speak to groups like this, does it does it really make a difference? It makes a lot of difference because it brings us to the point of interconnectedness. All human beings are interconnected to each other. We all learn from each other. We get inspired from each other. I'm not sure if I was part of such forums, I would have been able to continue the work that I do because I get a lot of courage energy and inspiration from forums like these. So because and I know, yes, there are people who support the work, even if there are challenges, even if it's difficult, there I have friends and people around the world who support and cherish the work and who believe in me. So it's so much important. And then it's so important to give the message of hope because when people hear about countries like Pakistan, they think it's all dark and that mm -hmm. it's a very difficult country. Mm -hmm. But then when they see people like me, and they hear stories about the work that we are doing, the, the change that we are bringing, then actually they can see that in those dark places, there are actually candles of hope as well who are working locally to bring change in their communities. Are you a threat to some of the men who want to keep things as they are? And with like with Malala, right? we saw what happened to her when she spoke out and she's still speaking out but do you feel afraid sometimes i am a beacon of hope for many young people for millions of young people in my community however i am also seen as a threat not by men but by institutions or by people who think that who for whom I'm a challenge, whose agenda I'm challenging, for example, militant groups. I am working on preventing young people from joining militant groups by and, and I am helping young people to unleash their potential to become peaceful members of their communities and to make their communities a peaceful place. So institutions which protect militants, institutions which promote militancy, I'm a threat to those institutions and those people. Do you speak with them? Can you speak with them? Or or would it they, just... They, they even don't consider us human being. They, yeah, they, they yeah. even don't think that I'm a human being and they, will, they, they don't consider actually, you know, like how can you speak to someone who even think that you are not a human being and uh, they just... How long have you been doing this now, this kind uh, of work? For 15 years. For 15 years. Have you seen much progress? I have seen people changing. I have seen institutions changing. When we started the work, no one believed we can achieve anything. There were many people who thought that we are just some people who are coming up with Western ideas and we're trying to Westernize the um, uh, our communities. But same people who had ridiculed our work, now they bring their daughters to our office and they tell us, we want our daughters to be heroes like you, to be leaders like you in their community. And that is the change we have seen. The people that you met here at the Spirit of Humanity Forum in, in Reykjavik, Iceland, uh, do they, when you hear them speak, does it bring new ideas and fresh thoughts to you that you can then bring forward when you go home? There, um, so uh, uh, one of the amazing thing about places like Spirit of Humanity is ideas. It's a place to share ideas. Just now I was in a workshop which was about power of circle of seven women. And I thought that this was an amazing idea to learn that how uh, people or women can be more powerful when instead of working in linear structures of hierarchy, they sit in circles, in non-linear circles and support each other. So it's, you know, there are always new, new ideas are shared, which are powerful, amazing, and which strengthen the work that I do back home. So it's always, I think, it's a good idea to come to forums like this, learn from new ideas, 
take inspiration from what people are doing from their achievements um, like even on the first day there was Rama Mani Dr. Rama Mani did an exercise about empathy it was about understanding each other and listening actively and I thought wow this is such an amazing exercise of for building empathy and if I do uh, this with young people back in my home it will be actually so easy to teach them about peace so you know at times there are little small things which change your heart and mm. then you think that it can change heart of many other young people back home. Mm -hmm. Well, listen, thank you so much for sharing your story and your thoughts. And it's a pleasure to have met you. And good luck when you go back home. And thank we wish you. you the best. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.